The subject of the lesson today is, did God hate Esau? I'm going to take some scripture from uh, Malachi and Obadiah and a few other places. And we're just going to talk about, did God really hate Esau? Well, if you look at Isaiah 34, Ezekiel 35, and Obadiah 10 through 21, and consider that he not only said it once in Malachi, he said it again in Romans 9, 13, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. It sure looks like the answer to me would be yes, but I'll let you figure it out. What do, what do you think? Why, why would God hate Esau? Ezekiel 35, verse 5 says, Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. So this is talking about the tribulation period. It refers back to Daniel chapter 9, verse 24, the 70th week, when it says God makes an end of their sins and a reconciliation for iniquity. But they have hated Israel all throughout history <laughs> and have shed the blood. And uh, during the Babylonian captivity, they aided the Babylonians in Israel's time of calamity. Why does God hate Esau? Ezekiel 35, 10 through 11, because thou hast said these two nations and these two countries shall be mine and we will possess it. You know, um, <clears throat> those nations, those Palestinian nations have been trying to get a hold of Israel, all of Israel, forever. They want it. They want all of it. Verse 11, Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will even do according to thine anger and according to thine envy, which thou hast used out of thy hatred against them. And then on down in Ezekiel thirty-five, fourteen, Thus saith the Lord God, When the whole earth rejoiceth, I will make thee desolate. The time the whole earth rejoices will be in the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. And during that time, Edom will be desolate. Not only will it be desolate, there's going to be a lake of fire right there in the millennium uh, kingdom. The desire of the descendants of Ishmael and Esau has always, always, always been total annihilation of the Jews. The Lord's vengeance toward them is total destruction of those Edomites. So this lesson will be of some help to, to help us understand why that's going to happen and uh, also why it's so very important that we treat Israel good. Those will prosper that love Israel is what the Bible says. The Bible says when you touch Israel, you touch the apple of God's eye. Also, it should help us to see that God does change his mind. Therefore, we should never give up praying for something. This lesson is it's helpful to us to, to see and understand more about what's going on in our world today, and it'll give us a clearer picture of what's going to happen in the future. When Jesus comes to earth again, his feet will stand upon the Mount of Olives, but that's not the first place he's coming to. Edom will be one of the very first places God strikes at his coming. So we know about Abraham had a son named Isaac. Isaac and Rebekah had Esau and Jacob. Esau begged his brother Jacob for some of the red soup he was cooking. So his name became Edom. Edom means red. And he's known as the father of the Edomites. Jacob later became known as Israel, and he's the father of the Israelites. Esau was the oldest, and the oldest brother was to receive the birthright and the blessing, meaning a double portion of all Isaac his father owned should have gone to Esau at Isaac's death. But Jacob got the birthright and the blessing. That Esau didn't get either was mostly his own fault, but nevertheless, after that, he hated his brother 
and he did all he could do to spite Jacob and all through history. Those people have continued to do the same. Esau took wives from the daughters of Ishmael. Ishmael was Isaac's half-brother, Esau's uncle that Abraham had sent away to the east country. God said Ishmael would be a wild man, and Ishmael's descendants are the Muslims and the Arabs today. When Moses was leading the Israelites through the wilderness, these instructions concerning the Edomites were given to him in Deuteronomy chapter 2, 4, and 5. And command thou the people, saying, Ye are to pass through the coast of your brethren, the children of Esau, which dwell in Seir, and they shall be afraid of you. Take ye good heed unto yourselves, therefore meddle not with them, for I will not give you of their land, no, not so much as a foot breadth, because I have given Mount Seir unto Esau for a possession. Deuteronomy 23, 7, Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, for he is thy brother. But for the other nations that were in the land promised to Israel, God said, Thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Now, boy, does God ever change his mind later on about what he just said about the Edomites. They're your brethren. Don't hurt them. Don't bother them. Don't meddle with them. And you're not going to get any of their land. Well, they're going to get all of their land one day. Malachi 1, 1 through 5 has not been fulfilled yet. In it, we see something strange after reading in Deuteronomy where God told Israel to be good to the Edomites and not meddle with them. God says in Malachi, beginning in verse 3, And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom saith, We are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, They shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness, and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever and your eyes shall see and you shall say the Lord will be magnified from the border of Israel so something happened between Deuteronomy 2 and 23 when God told Israel don't hate an Edomite who's your brother don't meddle with Edom because I've given them that land in Isaiah 34 5 God calls the Edomites the people of my curse. Actually, a lot of things happen, but we'll just look at one, and then you can read for yourself and, and see the rest. We can see through this that God does change his mind sometimes, and so we can know our prayers and our behavior is very important. Our salvation is now secure, but we stand to lose a lot when our walk is not what it should be with the Lord. He may withdraw His protection, rewards, comfort, health, life, our joy, our peace. But in the Old Testament, if their walk ceased to be upright, they could lose their soul. Esau was the father of the Edomites. His brother Jacob became the father of the Israelites. And from day one, the Edomites were always hostile and doing bad stuff to Israel. But the book of Obadiah tells us about the episode that must have really changed God's mind about them. During the time of the Babylonian captivity, when God sent Nebuchadnezzar in to wipe out Jerusalem, the Edomites helped the Babylonians, and they prevented the Jews from escaping. Reasons for Edom's punishment from Obadiah 10 through 14. I'm going to just tell you what it says, but go back and read it in your King James Bible so you can get it just like God gave it. Beginning at verse 10, um, Obadiah, because of the violence you did to your relatives in Israel, You'll be destroyed forever. When they were invaded, you didn't care, and you refused to help them. The invaders carried off their wealth and divided up Jerusalem, and you acted like one of Israel's enemies. 
You should not have gloated when they took your relatives to distant lands. You should not have been happy about it when the people of Judah suffered so much. You should not have spoken arrogantly in that terrible time of trouble. You should not have plundered the land of Israel when they were suffering so much. You should not have gloated over their destruction when they were suffering such calamity. You should not have seized their wealth when they were suffering such calamity. You should not have stood at the crossroads, killing those who tried to escape. You should not have captured the survivors and handed them over in their terrible time of trouble. Amos 1, 11, Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Edom, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because he did pursue his brother with the sword and did cast off all pity and his anger did tear perpetually and he kept his wrath forever. If you touch Israel, you touch the apple of God's eye. As a result of the Edomites aiding Babylon, the outlying lands surrounding Jerusalem were given to them. And let me stop and say this before I go on. In Scripture, there's more than one application. There's historical, there's prophetical, and there is a spiritual application we can apply to our life. A lot of times in the Bible, God is talking about something that has happened in the past, past history, like Babylon. But at the same time, it's talking about something that's still yet to come in the future, prophetical. Um, so a lot, th this is that way. It's happened in the past. It's going to happen again in the future during the tribulation. So as a result of the Edomites back then aiding Babylon, when they took the Jews captive. The outlying lands surrounded Jerusalem were all given to them, and their descendants still occupy these lands, but they aren't known as the Edomites now. They're known today as the Arabs or the Palestinians. The term Palestine was originally known as being an area of land in southern Canaan, of which the people known as the Philistines occupied just a very small part. And that was only because the Israelites were disobedient to God and didn't rid the land of them as God had told them to do. They left a few there. The term Palestine does not appear in any written record until the 5th century after Herodotus the term Palestine came to be used for the entire region, which had been known as Canaan. So, Canaan became Palestine. The Assyrians, Babylonians, Persians, and the armies of Alexander the Great all conquered the region in succession. And finally, it was conquered by Rome. By the time Rome appeared, it was known as Judea because it was of the ancient kingdom of Judah, which had been destroyed by the Babylonians. But some called it Palestine. And then later, the Roman emperor, Hadrian, renamed the region Syria Palestinia as an insult and to punish the Jewish people for their insurrection. Now, people, this is important to me because people will say, oh, Israel should leave them alone. They have been on that land forever. Well, God gave that land to Israel, and they have not been on that land forever. Um, anyway, let me go on. So this, this uh, Roman emperor, Hadrian, he named it after two of their enemies, the Syrians and the Philistines. So today, the people east of Israel, who were known as the Edomites, are known as Arabs or Palestinians. The area is 85% Islamic today, and their complete judgment is still on its way. Malachi 1.4 
Edom saith, We will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, They shall build it, but I will throw down. God judged Edom in the days of the Maccabees, and their kingdom was destroyed. But he's not finished yet. There's more to come. So past history is talking about that somewhat prophetical history or prophetically it's speaking of what's yet to come. Ezekiel 35, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee, and I will stretch out my hand against thee. From Genesis 36, 8, we see that Mount Seir is the land of Esau. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel, because thou hast said these two nations and these two countries shall be mine, we will possess it. When the earth rejoiceth, I will make thee desolate. Thou shalt be desolate, O Mount Zir, and all Adamia, even all of it, and they shall know that I am the Lord. This will be at the second coming of Jesus, at the end of the tribulation. So these people have always, always been vicious and jealous of Israel because of God's promise uh, through Abraham, because God chose Isaac and not Ishmael and Jacob, not Esau. All that Obadiah wrote about is a picture of what's coming. What happened in the days of Nebuchadnezzar will happen again. Muslims will be helping mystery Babylon the Great which is also known to Bible believers as modern-day Rome to get rid of Jews during the tribulation. Revelation 17 through 18 speaks of this. Babylon as being a great city which sits on seven hills. Other descriptive phrases lead us to believe it's Rome, where all the false religions of the world will have come together as one, a one-world religion under a one-world government during the seven-year tribulation period after we Christians have been taken out at the rapture. After Obadiah talks about Edom's sin against the Jews in verses 10 through 14, he says in Obadiah 15, For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen, as thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. Edom boasted about rebuilding in Malachi 1.4, and God said, But I will throw down, and your eyes shall see it, and ye shall say, The Lord will be magnified from the border of Israel. Edom is on the south border of Israel. Your eyes shall see and ye shall say, The Lord will be magnified from the border of Israel. That will happen when the Lord comes down and kicks the Edomites and all the ones who have been mean to Israel out of that land forever and gives it all to the Jews. Remember, he didn't do that when Israel came out of Egypt in Deuteronomy 2, 4 through 5. He told Israel then to leave Edom alone, but he has since changed his mind. And when Christ returns at the second advent, Israel will be given even more land than was promised to Abraham at the first. Obadiah 15 through 21 is all future, although many Bible teachers will say it's all past. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen, as thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee, and thy reward shall return upon thine own head. Edom will be as though they had not been. Verse 17, But upon the upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. It's never happened yet, but it will. There shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord hath spoken it. Obadiah 19 through 20 then tells us the Edomite land will be given to Israel when Christ returns. Muslims are using Israel's land now. The people are lands, are uh, they're listed. There are the Philistines, Samaria, the Canaanites, which is the Gaza Strip, the West Bank, and the Palestinians. Zarephath in verse 20 is in Lebanon. 
Esau and Gilead are Transjordan. During the 1,000 year reign of Christ, also called the millennial reign, also called the kingdom age, Israel will be given all the Edomite land and this will complete the Abrahamic covenant of Genesis 12, 1 through 3. Obadiah 21 has not yet been fulfilled. And Savior shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. Not fulfilled yet. And since some couldn't understand it, they changed it in newer versions to make it fit past history, but it's still yet to come. The saviors with the lower case are you and I and all the saved who come back with Jesus at his second coming. Nehemiah 9.27 gives another example of people being called saviors. Speaking of Israel, they, thou gavest them saviors who saved them out of the hand of their enemies. And saviors came up on Mount Zion to judge. 1 Corinthians 6, 2 through 3 says, Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? And how much more things that pertain to this life. Compare scripture with scripture to get the understanding of it. Um, so I think I'm, I'm going to stop right there, but I would like to talk about that temporary uh, lake of fire that will be in Edom and uh, during the Millennial Kingdom, because to me that's very, very interesting. And also uh, the reason we know Jesus is not coming directly to the Mount of Olives, but will strike Edom first is because the path of his coming is given in scriptures. And that's interesting. So I'm going to leave you with this today. I think that's enough for you to, to have to go over, reread, think about, see for, for yourself what you believe. Does God really hate Esau? <laughs> uh, I will. Did I tell you? I'm not sure I told you that, that vengeance is not an attribute that we're given or is available to us when God gives us the fruits of the Spirit. Um, but one day when we come back with Him, that will be something that um, we will be involved in. Let me give you a couple of scriptures to to show you that. I, I, you know, I, right now I'm thinking, hmm, i am leave that to Him, but... Uh, Nevertheless, when we get our new body, there's going to be some things going on that's going to be really surprising. Uh, you might read through Revelation 19, verse 14, Joel 2, 1 through 11, and Psalms 149, the party the day before we come back with Jesus. Okay, God bless you. God bless you, and uh, I hope hope this lesson inspires you to study more. Dig in God's Word. It's full of some, wow, amazing things.